a great poem. I've composed it all, but nothing is written. I need someone to write down what I know. What's your name? Vyasa. What's your poem about? It's about you. Me? Yes. It's the story of your race. How your ancestors were born, how they grew up, how a vast war arose. It's the poetical history of mankind. If you listen carefully, at the end, you'll be someone else. Ganesha, welcome. Who am I that you're looking for a scribe for the poetical history of mankind? You really Ganesha? Yes. Ganesha. In person. I'm ready. You can begin. Come and sit down. There's something secret about a beginning. I don't know how to start. May I offer a suggestion? You're most welcome. As you claim to be the author of the poem, why don't you begin with yourself? Right. Hmm. A king, hunting in a forest, fell asleep. He dreamed of his wife, and there was a joyful explosion of sperm. Very good start. When the king awoke and saw the sperm on a leaf, he called a falcon, and said, take my sperm quickly to the queen. But the falcon was attacked by another falcon. The sperm fell into a river. A fish swallowed it. A few months later, a fisherman caught the fish, cut it open, and found in its stomach a tiny little girl oh. whom he called Satyavati. Satyavati. She grew up. She became very beautiful. But unfortunately, she smelled most dreadfully of fish. This made her very sad. No one would come near her. But one day, a wandering hermit saw her and said, I like you. Let's make love here right away. And I promise to turn your dreadful stench into a most delicious odor. And she cried, now here I can't. So the hermit drew a thick mist across the river and the fields. She opened herself to him, and as she did so, she became fragrant, irresistible. They had a son? Yes, I am that son, Vyasa. Keep going, son of the mist. We haven't started yet. What happened at the beginning? 
It was a golden age. There was no war, no misery. Men were close to the gods. There was a prince called Bhishma, a perfect prince. His mind was clear, his body strong, his heart noble. But he couldn't be king. Why? Because it was impossible for him to marry, to have children. Why? Because his father had cast his eyes on Satyavati, and he burned with passion for her. Satyamati, your mother? Yes, my mother. Your mother's playing a part in your story. Any objection? <laughs> no, no objection at all. Did she marry Bhishma's father? Satyavati refused to marry unless her sons could be king. So Bhishma sacrificed himself for his father's happiness to avoid all family conflicts. He swore the oath of absolute renunciation. I abjure forever the love of woman. He said that? He said just that in all solemnity. I abjure forever the love of woman. And the gods applauded his act. In fact, they were so pleased with Bhishma that they gave him the power to choose the time of his death. Is it possible? It was possible in those days. So Satyavati had another child? Yes, but he was a poor weakling. But you know, in the olden days, if a king wanted to get married, he had to win a wife in a tournament. But this young king was far too feeble to even take part. So Bhishma fought in his place. He swept everyone off the field and came back with three wives instead of one. The youngest was crying. Amba, why these tears? Before you won me at the tournament, I had already chosen a husband, in secret. He knows it, and he loves me. It's King Salva. How can you, who so revere fidelity, how can you marry me to your half-brother, when I'm already bound by love to another man. Salva's waiting for me. Let me join him. What you say is true, Amber. You can go.